Hello and welcome to my little labs. On today's episode, I'm solving a problem. This is my dehumidifier and it does the job of removing moisture from the air perfectly, apart from one silly little problem. I have it set to auto mode so that when the air moisture goes above 40%, it automatically turns on and removes it. However, if the air in here is stagnant, it just doesn't. Let me demonstrate. According to this sensor right here, the humidity level is at 32.6%. According to the uh, built-in humidity sensor of the uh, dehumidifier, it's at 37. Uh, bit of a discrepancy. I don't quite know which one is wrong or right. However, if I turn on the hot water and let this room get a little bit steamier, you'll notice that this thing doesn't actually turn on. Okay, I think that's enough to prove my point. Currently, the humidity in here is now 48.5%. According to this guy, it's still 37%. I don't know where the humidity sensor in this guy is, but it just doesn't turn on. This room can be at like 80 or 90% humidity, and it just will not turn on unless you either force the air inside of it, or you turn on the fan in order to actually like get it to circulate some air and then it's like oh it's humid in here i should turn on please demonstrate you might need more air apparently it's now 40 percent so it should kick on oh the humidity actually went up in here it's now 50.8 okay so now According to it, it's at 42% humidity, 43% humidity. So it's realizing that it's more humid in here, but it's not doing anything about it. Now it kicks on. Um, okay, shush. So yes, when it turns on, it does the job perfectly, but it doesn't know when it needs to turn on. So. I'm gonna bring this over to my desk and I don't wanna make it smart. I think it's perfectly stupid the way it is. I just wanna find a way to make it reliably turn on when it gets humid. So I'm gonna roll this guy over to my desk because it's on wheels. And uh, meanwhile, you get to watch this message from my sponsor. JLC PCB. With 19 years of experience and five state-of-the-art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing with one to eight layer PCBs starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability. JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process, which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now, there's an exclusive offer where you can get six layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. Okay, I stopped off by the kitchen to uh, make some tea. Right, I'm gonna start off by doing some uh, very light uh, inv- Oh, wow, that needs cleaning. Uh, I'm gonna start seeing what I can unscrew without breaking it and uh, kind of just go from there, really. Uh, these bits remove because that's the water tank and that's the uh, thing. Um, there's some screws here, maybe I'll start with those, but then there's screws on top here, so I'll start with the ones on tops and uh, on top and then we'll move down. By the way, sorry about the wide angle, I'm filming on my phone, it's kind of, apart from my webcam, that's the only other camera I have. Um, okay, that's right. How do I not lose all the screws? Okay, this is just the uh, the interface board, so hopefully none of the uh, humidity 
readings happen there. Um, how much further can we go? Does this whole side come off? Considering how dusty it looks, it might just need a dusting. Ah, oh, screws at the bottom, how dare you? Aha! Uh -huh. Wow, that is a cake load of dust. Wow. What do you do? Oh, is that actually what I'm after? Come have a look. That looks like what I'm after. Why are you like in the side here? That's such a stupid place. Does this come out? It should do. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna Google any of this and see if it comes up with anything. Let's. Oh my God, is that glued in? What in the hell? I don't want to rip this out. Okay. It would be nice if the people outside were not playing copyrighted music. R10. Ooh. Translate. Moisture sensor. It is what I'm looking for. Why is it in such a stupid place then? I just don't understand the logic of having the humidity sensor be here. When the air is coming in from here and exiting there. It like, how? Air does not go in there. Um, so I guess moving it somewhere closer to here would be the thing to do, right? Like there maybe? This needs a clean because wow, this is gross. So my current thought process is to put it up here because I don't want to put it like in between the uh, radiator because then it will just get caked with dust and everything else and then it will never understand what humidity is. Um, so I'm thinking put it up here along next to this because it doesn't interact with the airflow but it's closer to the top part where the air... Wait, does the top bit cover that? No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. I thought it like funneled the air away from here. So I'm think, yeah, I'm thinking some kind of permanent solution to mount it here and then kind of just like experiment and see if it works properly. Uh, but first I want to, I want to just clean this because ew, that's mm, gross. Okay. Clean time. By the way, most of the appliances I own at some point in their life get renamed. Uh, I've had this guy for about five years now. He hasn't been renamed yet. So um, enter your submissions down below and whichever gives me the biggest giggle will win. Oh, there's vent holes on the side. Yeah, no, they're directly over the sensor. So then why doesn't it... Why doesn't it register? We just need some kind of airflow over the sensor because clearly if there isn't any, it just won't. It has ground, voltage, and data. How many volts do you reckon it's running on? Multimeter. Turn it on. Shush. Five volts. Okay, I can work with that. Do I have a five volt fan? Okay, so I have a five volt fan. So here's my current thought process. I try to put the fan close to the sensor. Now, it does mean the fan would be like constantly running, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. This is just a five volt fan. So like it's not going to be spinning really fast and it's not going to be stupidly loud, but it would give some air circulation so that the sensor can get a proper reading right that tracks right that's a good thought process right please please somebody reassure me this fan's got a connector on it i'm just gonna snip it off see if it works it works okay yeah this could work so now where do i jam this guy 
Okay, so if I put this guy back to where he belongs, down here, there's not a lot of wiggle room in here. Would it look stupid if it was on the outside? I mean, the answer is yes, but like, how stupid? Screw it, I'm doing it. Okay. I'm going to drill a tiny hole to stick the wire through. And then the fan's gonna sit there. And then I'll probably either screw it in or attach it with some form of hot, sticky adhesive. Let's drill a hole first so I can stick these wires through and solder them into that connector. Do I need to drill a hole? I mean, there's already a bunch of holes here. Can I just... Huh, yeah, no, that kind of works. Kind of, kind of ugly though. But there's a fan sticking up the side of it, so I'm not... I don't think I can really complain too much. Yeah, I guess that would work. But Ami still wants to drill a hole, but mostly for the fun of drilling a hole. So now I need to solder the fan to the sensor through the hole, like that. So uh, let me get my soldering iron. <coughs> yes, I am aware my lab is uh, very messy at the moment. There's, there's a lot going on, okay? Where does my, where's my soldering iron stand? Reassembly. We should be able to plug this guy back in. Uh -huh. Yes, perfect. Okay, that goes there. That spins that way. Blows air in. Blows it over the sensor. Humidity red properly. Cool. Let's grab the screws and screw that back in. One. Two. Three. Four. Stick it to the thing. Okay, and the fun spins. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm realizing it's not the prettiest thing, but if I turn it on, it works. I'm gonna give this some time to for the juices to settle, and then I'm gonna test it out. I'm gonna put it back in the bathroom for the time being though. Okay, so it's the next day, and uh, as you can hear, the fun is a little more noticeable than I would like, but uh, it's fine. So the dehumidifier says it's 45% uh, humidity in here. The sensor on the wall says it's 36. So there's still a discrepancy. I don't know who to believe anymore, but anywho, I want to test it out first by uh, actually stopping the fan and just putting some blue tack there because I want to see if, uh, if it was the cleaning that helped or the addition of the fan. I'm kind of worried it's the cleaning that helped, so uh, let's experiment. Right, um, so that means I didn't need to add the fan, it just needed to be cleaned. My god, I'm f stupid. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe, support me on Patreon for cleaning tips. <laughs> and, um, I can't believe I'm that dumb. Just clean your dehumidifier every so often. My god, I... <sighs> How do you over-engineer cleaning? My god. 
Okay, well, I can't, I can't like dip out of this shot, so um, I guess I'll just disappear. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> well, bare minimum, I'm glad I didn't drill a hole.